seldom found in modern day life. There is an old saying among river rats that each time you step into the river, you never step in the same river twice. For change is the only thing constant along the river. By the end of April, the snapping turtle is out from under its wintry prison of ice. It begins to travel up and down the backwater flues. Certainly it's ravenous after a winter of not eating. The snapping turtle is so named because it snaps. One is rarely so foolish. Maybe only one time one will stick one's finger in front of a snapping turtle because you'll end up wearing the thing. Toward the summer solstice, a primeval urge brings Mama Turtle out from the waters to her traditional egg-laying ground. She not only returns to the same spot each year, but in all probability, she was born here. She lays up to 30 ping-pong ball-sized eggs into the hole she's dug in the bank. Then she covers the nest and entrusts the sun, sand, and time to do the work of birthing. She says, So long, kids. I'll see you toward the end of summer. Fishing. Yeah, well, we're going to try and catch us a trout. Shadows are crossing the stream. A slight breeze. And the grasses are ready. Cool season grasses are seeding. Their seed heads nod toward the waters. Now is the coming of summer. Bite. It doesn't make a bit of difference, really, whether one is catching a fish or not. Certainly, I need some fish to, to eat. But if fishing was all about catching, we'd call it catching, but we call it fishing. It's all about being out there thinking about times past, times to come, today. A 
among river folk, there's a little jingle that is sometimes said. What a wonderful bird is the pelican, for its beak can hold more than its belly can. White Pelican believes in community, a sense of community, and they help each other. The pelicans will surround a school of fish, literally herd them like one would sheep. One watches a duck take off from the water. It's almost effortless. But when one watches a pelican, it's like watching a 747 going down the runway. It takes a great deal of power and effort and, and quite a large body of water for them to, to gain enough speed and eventually rise up in the air. During the height of summer, the waters of the great river give birth to the biggest and yet most short-lived spectacle of the year. Yes, 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 I Mississippi. I keep it rolling on. I said, yes, those other times we coming on. Hey, M-I-S, S-I-S, S-I-P-I, hey, Mississippi. Hey, Mississippi. Fighting on. Fighting on. Well, nothing better for me on. Play guitar. It's the 4th of July. A day in the life of the mayfly. Born, mate, lay eggs, die. Mayflies are the Mississippi's barometer. A big hatch means a healthy river. days, I followed a very strange profession in the summertime, that of a snaker. A snaker hunted timber rattlesnakes and killed them for a bounty. The bounty was five dollars a piece for the adults, one dollar a piece for the unborn. And in the summertime, I would travel up the steep hills that line the Mississippi River, seeking rattlesnakes. There has always been an innate fear, it seems, in the human psyche when it comes to snakes. The rattlesnake, being a poisonous snake, created even more fear. People killed them at every turn, every opportunity. It seemed as though it were the right thing to do at the time. It was a way to supplement my income as a river rat. And I never dreamed that the timber rattlesnake would become endangered. But that's what has happened. 